Article 3 speaks of social justice, a theme that is much a part of the discourse of the church, a theme that is not without discussion, not without controversy. What do we mean by social justice? As you recall, a simple definition of justice is giving the other person his or her due. That would be an example of personal justice between two persons. What do we mean by justice in society or social justice? Justice toward men disposes one to respect the rights of each and to establish in human relationships the harmony that promotes equity with regard to persons and the common good. Social justice is ensured when the society provides the conditions that allow associations or individuals to obtain what is their due. And at the basis of social justice is respect for the dignity of the human person. Respect for the dignity of the human person. This is at the very basis of everything that the church teaches about social justice. Only when the transcendent dignity of man is respected can social justice be obtained. The person represents the ultimate end of society, which is ordered to him. St. John Paul II aptly states that what is at stake is the dignity of the human person, whose defense and promotion have been entrusted to us by the Creator, and to whom the men and women in every moment of history are strictly and responsibility in debt. The rights of the human person exist prior to society. These rights are inalienable. These are rights that are God-given. These are rights that are part and parcel of having been created in the image and likeness of God. Human rights are the basis of the moral legitimacy of every authority. If an authority does not respect human rights, it is left to rely only on force or violence to obtain obedience from its subjects. The church reminds men of goodwill of these rights and to distinguish them from unwarranted or false claims. Respect for the human person is at the very heart of the church's teaching on social justice. Respect for the human person follows the observance of the principle that all men and women are neighbors or brothers and sisters. Everyone should look upon his neighbor without any exception as another self. We know from our human experience that legislation cannot wipe away selfishness that that part of concupiscence, that part of the tendency toward that which misses the mark uh, is part of the way in which we live. It's just the water in which we swim, as it were. Legislation cannot do away with prejudice and selfishness, but the virtue of charity can. The duty to regard another as neighbor is the most urgent when it applies to the disadvantage. This duty extends also to those who are different from us and even to, of our enemies. Liberation in the spirit of the gospel is incompatible with hatred of one's enemy as a person, but not with hatred of the evil that he does as an enemy. When the Catechism speaks of social justice, the Catechism also speaks of the equality between men and women and the differences between men and women. The fundamental equality among men and women is that we are created in the image of God, endowed with rational souls, redeemed by Christ Jesus, and given the same calling to beatitude. Every form of social or cultural discrimination in fundamental personal rights on the grounds of sex, race, color, social conditions, language, or religion must be curbed and eradicated as incompatible with God's design. 
there are fundamental equalities between men and women, there are also differences, legitimate differences, that are part of the way in which God creates man. Male and female, He creates them. He creates them with a complementarity, and these differences must be respected. Differences in age, physical abilities, intellectual or moral aptitudes, the benefits derived from social commerce and the distribution of wealth are all part of God's plan. God wills that each receive what he needs from others and that those endowed with particular talents share the benefits with those who need them. These differences promote and even oblige the practice of generosity, kindness, and the sharing of goods. However, there are sinful inequalities that cause many to suffer. These sinful inequalities are in open contradiction to the gospel. Their equal dignity as persons demands that we strive for fairer and more humane conditions. Excessive economic and social disparity between individuals and peoples of the one human race is a source of scandal and militates against social justice, equity, human dignity, as well as social and international peace. As the ch church teaches through the catechism on the topic of social justice, the catechism has a very important article about solidarity. Remember that the catechism was written during the pontificate of St. John Paul II. And that word solidarity carries very special importance to him as it was the banner under which the Polish people uh, were able to free themselves from the tyranny of communism. Pope John Paul, St. John Paul, was a giant force in the downfall of communism in Eastern Europe. And this term solidarity uh, is a very, very keen expression of his beliefs and the church's beliefs about social justice. Solidarity is a direct demand of human and Christian brotherhood. Examples would include the just distribution of goods and remuneration for work, tensions and conflicts being settled by negotiation rather than violence. Remember that the Berlin Wall and the Iron Curtain both fell without the firing of a single shot, uh, a hallmark of that phrase solidarity. Solidarity is the key to resolving socioeconomic problems, especially solidarity among the poor, solidarity between the rich and poor, solidarity among workers, solidarity between employees and employer, solidarity among nations. International solidarity is a requirement of the moral order. World peace depends in part on this. And we must always remember that solidarity goes beyond simply the physical. It has to do with that solidarity of the human person along the lines of a much higher order. In spreading the spiritual goods of the faith, the church has promoted and often opened new paths for the development of temporal goods as well. And so throughout the centuries has the Lord's saying been verified, Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things shall be yours as well.